Hi everyone, welcome again. So in this tutorial, I'll be continuing the session where we left for the loading of multiple files in, or in a table using ODI. So earlier we discussed only the concept. So in this scenario, let's see how in the production environment we loop for all the files. So here we can see I I have been setting the variable names variable uh, VEMP file name for the file names before calling the mapping okay so similar things we need to do so let's open the file files underscore audit okay you can find all these files in my github repo i have already provided the link for the files in the video description so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a files a table HR underscore HR dot files audit. Okay, sorry. So here are the various columns here. So we see category. Category is the category of the file. Subcategory is if there is any further subcategory. For example, in our example, we can keep category as H, uh, as EMP. Then path of the directory. File name. Status. It should be picked, processing, processed, and error as well. Then line count, number of lines in the file, creation date, the date on which file got created or this record got created in fact. Then process date, the date file was processed, load time in seconds. So it is the time taken to load a file's data. Then session ID, session ID will be your ODI session ID. Okay. So let, uh, let's insert some of the dummy variables as well. Okay. All right. So let's view the values. Okay, we can see we have four files in our states table, their names and the status of the files. Okay, so let's see we have four files in our states table. Okay, having the word count of 25, 26, 35, 26. Okay, fine. So it looks good. So Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is to check or to get the count count of the files present in this state directory. So let me create another variable. V -V Give it a numeric refreshing. I use the scheme as target HR and my query will be select count one count edit files. Okay, sorry. It should be select. Into one function or that's where status equals to picked. Okay. So this is the status that we have picked. Okay. So pig means that we have picked our or a session has picked this file for the processing. So let's see how many files are there. Four. Okay. Good. So let me copy the command over here the variables so i'm going to drop it here yeah. so first thing will be that we are going to refresh the variable and to get what is the count of current files which are ready for processing okay 
then let me drop the variable again this time i'm going to check the count so evaluate variable greater than equal to one okay after that i'm going to refresh the variable and let me change it so now my query is going to be Here's my query. So what ODI variable is going to do, it is going to take the first value or not necessarily in the order, I'm not aware of. So here I have the query, it's also new way. okay, save it. Now I'll define the flow. I'm going to refresh the count, then I'm going to evaluate the count. If it is fine, I'm going to get the file name. Okay, and if it is fine, I'm going to load the table. Okay. This will be my first step. All right. So right now, let us run it and see what happens. So let me also truncate this table. Let me go to the operator. So here's the session. So now I can see there had been some 50 rows operation that happened. If I expand it, you can see further. Okay, so I can see the new row has been inserted. So let's go and check the values. Yeah, I can see the values got updated. Okay, let's see the variable values or the values present in the variables. You can see the name it picked. It implies the CSC, so it picked the first value. Okay, but you see it has all uh, it has only picked the first value. So now we need to put it into the loop. So what we are going to do, once a file has been processed, I'm going to update certain values of the files. Okay, For that, I need to create a procedure. It cannot happen in the mapping, so I need to create a procedure here. So let me name it update status. Yes. Let me define a task here. Picked. Assist. Typed. And there. So I have defined four tasks here. Let me define some options as well. I want to need the file name type value. Let me give the default value. Okay. 
we create it let me create a boolean variable okay boolean option sorry then persist for each option we are going to create one option and then finally error okay we'll keep the default values as false now we'll go to the task so open update status prc sql the sql file i have already placed these statements so just copy them what i'm going to do i'm going to fire an update sql here on the table for the given or the past file name and update some of the values Here yeah. now let me convert the target technology to to Oracle. I can convert them Oracle here. You can choose it. It will be set by default for every task. Okay. So now for the Boolean option, let me go to the task options and let me have it a conditional execution only when I have <coughs> given the value for picked as yes. Similarly, for other options as well, okay. So now we have created a procedure. So, what we'll do once the file has been updated, I'm going to update the status for the file as processed. Here I'm going to pass process as true, and my file name would be my variable name. So I'm going to pass here is load to be EMP. Oops, I lost it. Let me copy it from here. Okay, so now it got saved. What it will do that this procedure after loading will update it to persist. And we can again check the file count. So it will run in the loop until it until the value for employees file count reach the zero. So here you can save it and let me run it again. So now let's see how many files are there. There are four. Okay, yeah, we didn't update it. Yes. So let me rerun the package. Okay, so error out. Let's see. Okay, try to take Okay, logical schema has not been set, so that's right. So, I need to go to the procedure again and go to the task. Target command and took the logical schema strghr, the uh, schema, physical schema that you have defined for the connection. So, let us do it for every task that we have defined. So whenever you have to run this equal statement, you have to give it the logical schema. Okay, looks fine now. Okay. 
Now let's run again. Okay, so this time it worked. You see in the steps, we had four files. So you can see the four executions. The last one will yield the result as zero. So we can see the number of records getting inserted. See the status in the audit table. So we can see all the entries have been updated to process state. So in this session, what you have learned is how to loop when you want to when you want to insert data from multiple files into a table. So in the next tutorial, what we're going to see is how to insert the files in our audit table. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Bye.